Good evening. I'd like to call to order Elk Grove Park District um, regular scheduled meeting for January 30th, 2020. Kathy, can I get a roll call, please? President Wells. Here. Commissioner O'Malley. Here. Commissioner Cook. Here. Commissioner Soder. Here. Commissioner BFP's absent. Okay, we have approval of minutes. January 9th, 2020, Committee of the Whole Meeting. January 9th, 2020, Regular Meeting. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye as well. None opposed. Um, I need a motion and a second on January 9th, 2020, closed session meeting. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. President Wall? Yes. Any public communication? Yeah. Go right ahead. All right. Just come on up to that microphone. Sure. You can go with Dad. Yeah, he, he wants to talk too. Nice. He's got to talk too. <laughs> My name is Ryan Bookler. I'm a resident on Smethwick Lane. And first of all, I just want to say, you guys should all be applauded for your vision for that skate park. That is magnificent to see the kids, even when it's freezing out, they're out there. So kudos to you guys for that, first of all. And then I also wanted to add, I'm, I've grown up in Elk Grove. I'm very thankful for the park district and the role it's played uh, in, in my life and in my kid's life as well. The, the preschool is fantastic, the, the, the baseball we love and the, and the clinics, a lot of cool programs, v very, very pleased. So, so thank you. And then I just had a couple suggestions, I thought, that maybe the, the park district could look into. First of all, I know you guys have, as you're aware, you can rent out a room at uh, the pavilion for a swim party, and, and we've done that for, for birthdays. Now, when you, rent out the room and the swimming, there's only like a limit, I don't recall the exact number, it's like 25 wristbands or something like that. Well, if people are not swimming, they are, they are still required to get a wristband and to pay for it. So at a party we had booked for one of our kids in August, it, it just seemed kind of odd to me that my aunt and uncle were in there for five minutes and they had to get a wristband before they went and got uh, the, the food to bring back and as well as my, my grandparents. They're, they're, they're not going to swim. Now, I don't know if that's protocol at other park districts, but I know at different events like roller skating, if you're not skating, they don't charge you for that. And to me, it seems like if, uh, if, if you're not, like if I go to swimming lessons and I take them to swimming lessons, I don't, um, I don't pay to sit there to watch them. So I think you know maybe some flexibility looking into that policy I did speak with someone at the time, and she was unsure of, of who to talk to, so I figured I'd come and I'd, I'd just ask that here. And then another thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is like the flexibility with family schedules uh, with the Park District. Ethan takes hockey at, uh, he's taken at Hoffman Estates Park District before, and you know, it was Tuesday, Thursday, and if he can't make a day, then he was able to come in on, on like a Wednesday, like, yeah, no problem. Or when he did the uh, floor ball, he said, oh yeah, if you can't make it that day, come on the other one. So like here at the park district, um, I wanted to have him, I, I think there, it was like Monday, Wednesday were the days. And, and there are a lot of days that are offered for the swimming. And I think we couldn't make it on one of the days. So I said, hey, you know, can we pay for, for half the session? Uh, no, you can't do that. Or and I talked to Jason uh, about it as well. Jason's fantastic, does a great job with Rainbow Falls. And he had said something about what well, it has to do with the staffing. So if we know how many kids are there, then you know, we can staff it accordingly. But I, I just didn't know if there's any way to have some flexibility with that. Like, oh, we can't come you know, Wednesday. Maybe can we do Monday and Tuesday instead? So that to look into. And then I, I talked to Commissioner Waltz, I think when he came uh, to my door one day, and we had just gotten back from the Bloomingdale Park District. We go there every year for breakfast with Santa, and they have a DJ, they have a big brunch, uh, face painting, balloon person. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So we haven't gone to the Elk Grove breakfast with Santa or the Bunny in several years. Um, I, I'm not gonna get into the, the, the whole thing, but I mean, just looking at, hey, what can we do to make it better? And then one, one last one, and I'll let you get out with your meeting here. Well, Ethan, if you want to talk real quick. Um, now, I don't want to be known as the, the guy that came and complained about junkies here at the park board meeting, but when we did go to 
you know, the, the um, like the New Year's Eve fest or the Halloween fest, they had a jumpy. And, you know, the kids want to go on the jumpy. Well, if there's one jumpy and several hundred kids, I, I mean, the line was, was huge. So, you know, we rode on the commentate and you get a couple jumpies. So right. that, that, that's it. Um, but, but again, you know, thank you for all your hard work. Thank for the you for people watching, what you're referring to is, you know, a bounce, bounce house. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. bounce house. Oh, that's right, it's being recorded. Okay. <laughs> no, it's live. Yeah. All right. Oh, live too. Wow. Live covered. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. So now both people who are watching understand. <laughs> I heard you guys are exciting. There's a huge viewership. <laughs> the other outlets. We like to think so. <laughs> and then we had uh, Ethan would like to talk. Ethan, what do you got? He had a suggestion. Here, do you want me to lower this or? Right. Or take it over. There you go. There you go. Mm. Say, say your name. Hi, my name is Ethan, and I really wanted to skate, and I've been closed. And um, there's this ice can last for like summer, and it's synthetic ice. Ah, we need more ice. All right, yeah, so, synthetic ice. Yeah, very yeah. So, so very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan has wanted to skate. But, you know, every time, you know, as you know, it hasn't been cold enough to freeze it. So he said, hey, what about getting synthetic ice? And I said, sure, you can tell the park board. I'm going to go talk to them anyway. So his suggestion was he was wondering if you look into getting synthetic ice, perhaps. And I know Mr. Yeah. Cook said it's expensive right away. Yeah, so. well, we have looked at it. That's why yeah, I think Alan well, we Peterson did, did it. We, okay. we didn't look at synthetic ice. We looked at the putting the cooling cool. coils in the refrigeration. Mm -hmm. Ethan, I'll look into it, and I will hand deliver a letter to your name at your address. But you got to give me two years. Uh, everything takes two one years. week. One week, I'll get you an answer, and I'll write it. Okay? Yeah, I know the Hoffman Estates Park District. They have one that they put out in the parking lots, and they take out and put back up. So I mean, that way, they can skate if it's not cold enough, or even all year round. So yeah. Did you say Hoffman Estates? Yeah, Hoffman Estates. They have they have one that they set up in the parking lots, and they. Uh, uh, the man over there, his name is Randy Jordan. He knows all about that. So, Ryan, I followed everything. I just want to make sure on the one was, and I'm paraphrasing, but let's say there was an offering for Monday, Wednesday for a swim. swim. Could be anything, right? Right. You're saying is I can't make or a resident might not be able to make one of those days. Correct. Can we jump into the Tuesday, Thursday because it's the same program? Right, exactly. Okay. Or why Fair can't enough. we just go... Uh, just right. go to the Monday and pay for that session, so at least they're going one time. Okay. I mean, I don't know the schedule is hectic, and I just couldn't make it work with all the kids. So we'll definitely get back to you Perfect. addressing those four. Okay. So. All right. And again, thanks for using our programs because I know you're in a lot of our stuff. Thank you. Your yeah. whole family. What do you say? Thank you. All right. Thank talk you. to you soon, Ethan. See you, right. Right. All right. Okay. Any other comments from the audience? Um, any correspondence from anybody? Hearing, seeing none, we're at recommendations for acceptance and approval. <clears throat> approval of Hitchcock Design Professional Services for Master Plan Phase 2 to include program analysis. I need a motion and a second. So moved. And seconded. And anybody want to? My only on? question is you know, I'm comfortable with what they're going to do in the future and what we'd be paying for. How much have we already paid them to do their initial analysis? Because they weren't doing it for free, so they've already come out and talked to the commissioners. They've already talked to staff, so that was a separate payment. This, all right, so we're back in total around the seventy-five thousand. And did they initially give us a quote like a year ago? And I thought we negotiated the total price down, and now it seems like we're back in that range again. No, what I did was I only wanted to do the first phase last year because I only budgeted for the first phase, and then. Um, I wanted to finish the, the the rest of the phase this year, so I split it. Okay, that's what I did. Originally, I came to you guys and said I don't want to spend eighty or seventy thousand. The reason was I only had budgeted I think thirty, and I said I just wanted to do the first, which is your tangible facilities and evaluation of your facilities and parks, and then this will tie everything in together and finish it up. All right, and I guess my only other point would be what I said last year while we delayed it a little bit. Um, I would not want to see the process start myself until you fill a couple of key positions at the park district so that the new employees that might be here for 10 years and it'll be very valuable can have some input into whatever the questions they're asking. Yep. Okay.
Okay, are you ready to vote? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. President Wolf? Yes. Uh, this one is 5B, approval of pay request from Williams Architect for professional services and schematic design phases of the golf course, Fox, excuse me, of the golf course clubhouse and maintenance facility in the amount of $34,819.02. And I need a motion in a second. So moved. Second. Take a roll call, please. Oh, excuse me, anybody have any comments or questions? Okay. Sorry, we have a roll call now. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President Walsh? Yes. Um, we have the approval of Athletics Advisory Board member. This is a new one for youth basketball. Um, I move the following individual be appointed to serve a two year term as an advisory member of the Elk Grove Youth Basketball Board, and his name is Steve Schaefer. I need a motion in a second. I thought you said you moved that. Oh, I did move it, so second. there you go. Um, and everybody should have got something on the table kind of telling you who Steve is. <clears throat> no more comments or questions? Can we have a roll call? Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Soder? Yes. President Wells? Yes. Committee reports. Capital <laughs> projects, Commissioner O'Malley. The Committee did not meet, but at conference, uh, Tim gave uh, Commissioner uh, Cook and myself his time. Ben was uh, not participating, but was able to answer a couple questions, and I appreciate what Tim did. What I'd written down there was what I wanted to explain to the public and just share with the other commissioners is six or seven of our top projects coming out of this 2.5 funding and some rollovers on what capitals are going to be expected in the year 2020. So coming in tonight, kudos to Tim, he makes it easy for me. He actually listed some bullet items, seven of them, and then I wrote two or three down. So I want the general public to understand, and certainly you guys could have any questions. Um, one of the first things we're doing for $533,000, so obviously half a million dollars is working at the Hattendorf uh, Senior Center and preschool area. There's going to be park improvements, including the installation of a new recreational amenities, um, some learning stations, a family game area, a fitness area, a bag of court, a walking loop, seating, and a butterfly garden. The project is currently in pre-construction. The best thing about that is the, our park district, through uh, Tim's effort and his staff, we were awarded a state-funded, I'm assuming ID, IDNR is the Illinois Department of Natural Resources grant for $266,000. So half of that will be funded by the government, not our government, so that's really good. Um, for $350,000 we budgeted for the year 2020, we are going to demolish the Chelmsford School. That's the property that we bought a couple of years ago from the village. Uh, the vacant building is located within Marshall Park. Um, the building is severely deteriorated. It uh, poses environmental issues due to the process uh, or uh, the presence of asbestos, the park's playground, the parking lots are to remain. And um, that'll take place in the year 2020. At our Pavilion Aquatics, we're going to have a new lagoon water feature. That will be for $250,000. The play feature in the lagoon pool will be replaced. Um, right now it's in the engineering phase. The manufacturer of the new feature is water play and the color scheme will match the Pavilion Aquatics motif. Um, and this project will take place during our normal two to two and a half week shutdown, usually um, end of August, early September. Correct, Tim? Is that the time frame? Um, small project, but it's important to the athletic associations. Uh, we're going to uh, add two pitching bullpens on the third base side of fields number one and two at Lions Park and do some 24 foot dugout shelters at Windermere. A lot of people have been wondering, asking, We've had starts and stops. We will be doing a dog park for 250,000. The park district purchased 614 Perry Court. It's on the east side in the summer of 2019. This property is adjacent to Udall Park. Um, right now we're in the engineering and planting. Um, we're not sure exactly when construction will take place. Um, we're certainly gonna have some public meetings and input, not only on the when, the where, the who, but uh, we'll make sure the public is involved. Indoor at the pavilion, 
Jumps and Jiggles will get a $200,000 facelift. Um, this will feature a newer structure and uh, new flooring, and we are working on the design with several manufacturers at this time. A little bit boring, but it does cost money to keep our amenities open. Desert Air unit replacement for $310,000. Um, this is over at Pavilion Aquatics, and that'll be taking place in the summer. Some of the things that Tim did mention to us that didn't make his bullet list, but Jensen South, one of our parks, is getting um, some drainage for $100,000. We have our 190, that's our maintenance building on the east side in the industrial park. It's budgeted to have a new roof, that's for $400,000. We have not actually approved We've approved it in our budget, but um, we are holding off to make sure that that building is going to be there for the time being before we put a roof on it. And then um, through President Walls and Commissioner Cook and staff, uh, we've made an agreement with the Elk Grove Village administration, and thank you to Mayor Johnson and the trustees, but we're gonna be involved in adding some parking spots over at Rotary Green and our contribution will be $100,000 towards that. So that's just some of them. Obviously, it all doesn't add up to $2.5 million. Uh, mentioned to Bob, Tom might be the next chair of the Capitals, but certainly we want to add some of the smaller projects to give you, at least give the general public um, an idea on where your tax dollars are being spent. So didn't need a referendum, haven't raised taxes, but we're getting ready to spend $2.5 million uh, in the year 2020 on our amenities. And that concludes my report. Any questions for Ron? I mean, Bill. Wow. Ron's my middle name, I guess. <laughs> That's it. All right, thank you very much, Bill. You're welcome, Steve. <laughs> Finance Committee Commissioner Souter. I don't think I'm gonna be as nearly as exciting as Bill's was, so. We'll when have you been? Never. Uh, by the way, all of these are uh, uh, December 31, 2019 results, preliminary, unaudited, um, and that covers everything I'm about to tell you. But um, the, in the corporate fund, um, our net revenue year to date was a million two forty-five, compared to a budget of six hundred ninety-four thousand. Uh, some of that came from property taxes, but a lot of the other thing came uh, came from fees and. And, uh, registrations and also the fact that all expense categories were under budget except for utilities on the rec fund um, again all expense categories were under budget year to date and that revenue was a negative 69,000 compared to a budgeted loss of negative 370,000 program fees were a million nine seventy three compared to a budget of two million two twenty one and fees and emissions were a million nine ninety compared to a budget of two million one eighty one uh, golf had 27,194 rounds through December compared to 26,657 the prior year. Um, we did have a record wet, what was it, May or June? June. Yeah, June. Year. 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 Yeah. Um, so I'm glad we actually got up, got up above yeah. 2018, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll get better weather next year. Uh, net revenue for golf year to date was 68,000 compared to a budget of 80. Driving range was uh, net revenue 83,000 compared to a budget of 82,000. And again, all expense categories are at or under budget for the year, except miscellaneous. Sketchy. Really? It was barely over. It was buying things in miscellaneous. <laughs> That's a hard one to solve. <laughs> that is very important. <laughs> miscellaneous. The only one. That sounds like a fairly decent report. It was more exciting than I thought. <laughs> what were you thinking? I don't know. Like it was going to be usual. Any questions fuels, fuels for <laughs> any other questions or comments for Commissioner Sauer? Committee of the Whole is me. So our last meeting was three weeks ago, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Two. January 9th, Committee of the Whole, we discussed IAPD uh, renewal dues. Due, excuse me. Uh, we discussed IPRA conference, which we just, you guys just got back, right, this week? It was last weekend? Yes, Thursday, Friday, which and brings, Saturday brings me to a question on that. Um, we discussed a new drug and alcohol policy for the district. Uh, Youth Advi Advisory Board benefits. 
which is still in discussion. The park grant, uh, which is for Fox Run, correct? That's correct. So we're still in the running for that. Just, it just ended in the application. Yeah. So. But we did get the Oslad, correct me if I'm wrong, for Hagnar. Yep. So we're one for one currently. That's right. Nice. Um, and that's about it. And then this committee, the whole, we discussed anti harassment policy for commissioners. Our policies are got to be close to being online. And that's for the commissioners. We had a discussion on travel and indoor, or excuse me, travel and house soccer club. And we had a dis brief discussion on turfing Lions Park. And we might as well Five billion dollars. let them know that that's <laughs> sure, let the public not going to happen because, well, you probably remember the numbers better than I do. I just know they were very large. But what were the numbers? Well, for turfing all three fields, it was a little bit more than five million, right? For turfing two fields and part of the Enough to have it across four million dollars. Yeah, it was four million. Yeah, so it was like a four million or a million or five million three or something like that. And just not that that's not enough to stop you in your tracks. That's about a ten year deal, right? Because then you have to come back because it's well, just just a million of it would have to get right. done. But so, but still, I'm saying just a million. That's still a big chunk to swallow every <clears throat> million, million five right. every million in today's years. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, right. The re and the reason it's so expensive, it's on a floodplain. Correct. Entirely in a floodplain. Okay. Um, did I miss anything? All right. Um, athletic committee, Commissioner Sauer. I have no report. We have not met. Um, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop in our staffing piece. I know basketball and indoor uh, soccer are up and running, but um, I do plan on having, once once we get the new, what's the position, Ben? Director of Leisure Services. Director of Leisure Services, and I'll talk to Jeff more about this too, but I think that person, whoever is hired. Do you want me to update you guys on that? You yes. want an update? Um, I made an offer, she accepted. I, we will have a new leisure, Director of Leisure Services. Uh, we'll start February 24th. Her name is Tiffany Green, and she's coming to us from Roselle Park District. Hopefully she's had a chance to talk to her boss before she sees this. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was a premature <laughs> update. <laughs> we, assu we assumed we were going to see it in an email, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Not our problem. Uh, right? Hey, you know, she's on the paper. Is. Very excited. I don't think he's watching her. Uh, anything else for athletic committee? Enough. We are to golf course committee. Commissioner Cook. Okay, not much is going on, but I do want to remind that the bag leagues um, will continue to on Wednesday nights through uh, mid March, and the one day bag tournament is Friday, March 20th. Registrations are currently being taken at the pavilion. And that's all I have to report new at the golf course. Okay. <clears throat> Youth Committee is uh, Commissioner Bietke, who's not here, and I am second chair. Neither one of us made the last meeting, and it was last Thursday. I asked Irene from staff to send me the minutes, which I think she it was did. This Monday, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it was Monday, because that was Saturday. Um, Irene did send me the minutes, and I forgot to print them out. So next time, we will keep you up. Uh, was anybody here? Were you at the Youth Committee meeting? No, I was not. No? Nobody here was. Yeah, so. We're gonna have to update you on our next meeting. I'll just jump in on your reports. Um, adult Center Committee, Commissioner Cook again. Uh, yes, uh, Adults uh, Committee met on uh, Tuesday, January 21st. Uh, Tim was nice enough to bring over a one of the uh, new bus demo for the seniors to take a ride in and check it out, what we're kind of looking at as far as size and amenities and uh, was able to, they were able to provide their feedback. They were all very excited about the new bus, which we're looking to uh, replace one of our existing buses uh, and slightly upgrade it uh, with ADA uh, um, capabilities. It has a nice fold down ramp and we had Rod try that out and he said that worked great. Um, it has a capacity to hold, I believe three um, handicap seats, wheelchair, two in the back and one on the side that folds down. Uh, can be used, uh, and, and I'm sorry, 12 and two, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. 14 people plus the driver. Um, but the, they were very excited about the, the ramp um, and the, 
uh, the way that you can custom make the floor so that you don't have the wheel wells, which is a big concern on <clears throat> the current buses that we have. Um, and the seats were a little bit wider and uh, a little more safety from having handlebars they can hang on to the side rest to accommodate uh, the seniors there. So they were, once again, very excited and thank the board for um, you know, allowing their participation in selecting a new bus there. So now the next thing is working on the, the wrap for the bus that uh, with the Park District and Sheila Ray uh, logo and advertising. So more come on that. Uh, I would have announced that on part of my sheet. I just didn't know it was budget and approved. Uh, yes, it was in the budget. I, know, just I believe we had just at least three that. votes. <laughs> it wasn't big enough. Uh, I didn't know a wrap was budgeted. Uh, like a carbon fiber? Or what are we going on? Well, no, all, all of our vehicles. Oh, advertising wrap. Advertising wrap. For the all yes, they're all brand new. The new wraps. Are our marketing wrap. department's working on that with, with uh, Rushmore, the commissioner. our staff and volunteers. Okay, and then uh, they had 13 new members already uh, early in the season. They're very happy about that. Um, I also want to give a shout out to, and I'm going to mess up her name. Um, it up if you can't find it. Oh, I can't even. I'm not going to give a shout out. I can't <laughs> find my notes here. Oh, well, when I think of it, I'll give a shout out when I, I'll come back to that. Um, and that was it, I guess. I guess that's the thing. Any other questions for Commissioner report. Cook on the Adult Center Committee? Hearing seeing none, I'm going to circle back because I did find, thanks to Ben and Kathy, the um, Youth Committee notes. So the meeting was, thank you, Bill, Monday, June 27th, which I was not able to attend. Um, they met to discuss up upcoming activities and programs. They are concerned that the lack of interest in a teenage population for the programming um, and due to the inclement weather last year, the teen bonfire was canceled. Um, our last teen bonfire was successful. Actually, I was at that one and there was quite a few kids there. Uh, the two fall tween, they call it, programs were a field trip to Richardson Farms and tween at the pavilion. Summer Blast uh, was scheduled for July 10th and August 7th at 8.15 p.m. Rainbow Falls and we're fin finalizing 2020 teen bonfire date. Junior leadership applications are now available. Please stop at the pavilion or the Hattendorf customer service desk to pick up. Uh, the deadline is February 28th, so the end of February. And Audubon Skate Park, surprisingly, has seen an increase in usage since the opening of the outdoor park. We offer private lessons, private rentals, so please come out and check us out. Um, upcoming events is Safe Babysitter Class, February 8th. Teen Snow Tubing at Villa, Villa Olivia, which isn't very far away, <laughs> February 17th. Tween Night is March 12th and April 17th. And the Tween Night Spring Fling is April 18th. Anything wrong with those? Yeah, let's go. Okay. All right. Any other committees? Uh, yes, I found my note first of all for my shout out to Joanne Nardiello, who uh, runs the gift shop over at Sheila Ray, raised uh, four four thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars and twenty-two cents for two thousand nineteen for the Sheila Ray Adult Center. So, thank you very much for your hard work. Um, I also have a report for the foundation. We met uh, actually bef uh, today at 3.30. Um, I can find my notes from that. Um, and discussed our 2020 budget. Um, last year we gave over $12,000 in scholarship money uh, to needy families for different Park District programs, so we're very proud of that. Uh, we talked about some of the fundraising events you're going to see this year. One is going to be, uh, one of our big fundraisers will be the, uh, uh, the duck race. And that will be in August. August. And then also we're having a, a bag, glow in the dark bag tournament out of Fox Run uh, in June, June 26th. June 26th. Friday night. So we're looking forward to those two events to uh, raise some extra money and uh, to continue our mission. Anything else, Kelly, that I'm missing? Then? I don't think so. Oh, and we uh, re-elected our officers, <laughs> who will remain the same. 
dedicated volunteers that they are today. So uh, that is my report. Thank you on that. Any other committees? All right, we're at old business. Any old business? I don't know if this fits in old or new. We, we received in our board packet the um, pavilion membership thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see, and, and it's really nice that we're seeing year over year the change, but is there any way we could find the low water mark and put that in this report? The low water mark? <coughs> like one, once uh, Plant Fitness opened, we had a marked drop off in, in membership, but yeah. I anticipate it's going to table and, and then come back. I'd yeah. kind of like to see when that happens and how much it happens. Yeah, uh, we can get you a year. Yeah, I mean, just month, to month generally month incorporate that, figure out where the low point is and, and just publish that in the middle. No problem. So we can kind of see the, I'm, yep. what I anticipate to be a smiley face. There you go. <laughs> Not a problem at all. That was it. Any other old business? Congratulations to Irene. Ben, I, maybe we don't say it because usually we're only singling out staff if there's, we hear some complaints. But, you know, when we lost Kim Laper to when she transferred out, uh, an internal candidate, Irene Fasciano, took that position and then she ended up uh, having her right hand person being Lisa Brown. And if you look at the budgets and some of the end of the year results, it's been pretty seamless. So congratulations to those two employees. Thank you. Agreed. Uh, adoption of Ordinance 406, an adoption providing for the issuance of two, uh, $2,500,000 dollars taxable general obligation limited tax park bonds for the building maintaining improving and protecting of existing land and facilities of the park district and for the payment of the expense incident thereto providing for the levy of the direct annual of a direct annual tax to pay the principal and interest on said bonds and authorizing the sale of said bonds to the corporate fund of the park district i move for the adoption of ordinance 406 as presented second you have a roll call, please. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. President Wong? Yes. Next is adoption of Ordinance 407, an ordinance amending the anti harassment policy of the Elk Grove Park District for the purpose of achieving compliance with 5 ILCS 430 70 5. I'll make the motion. Second. We'll call, please. Commissioner Souter? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. President Wolf? Yes. We're at payment of the bills January 9th, 2020, in the amount of $71,292.10. January 10th, 2020, P cards, in the amount of $101,475.19. January 16th, 2020, in the amount of $66,489.84. And finally, January 12th of 2020, in the amount of $47,420.16. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Sutter? Okay. President Wall? Yes. Last, I need a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. I'll make that motion. Okay. Um, Kelly has something. Nope, I'm sorry. Late breaking news. Late, Late breaking news. <laughs> Special report. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make a, or uh, share a reminder with everybody that we have uh, delivered or are in the process of delivering camp brochures uh, to all the households here in Elk Grove. And we have resident registration that will begin on Monday, February the 3rd. Non-resident registration will begin on February the 10th, and that's for our outstanding camp programs that we offer here at Elk Grove Park District. They are second to none. So Irene is very involved in that as well with her staff, and we have some really unique camps. So if anybody is interested in um, having their children participate this summer, you can take advantage of early bird uh, discounts on February the 3rd. And then I also wanted to make a mention that this coming Saturday, at 12.30, we will begin our preschool registration for residents. So it's our resident registration this Saturday. It's taking place at the Hattendorf building at 12.30. So this is all our three-year-old and four-year-old preschoolers. And it's Saturday, February 1st. Yes, it is. Yeah. For those people watching it on or after February 1st. Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. 
So, uh, but it will open. So, you know, if you can't make it on the first, you could come another day as well. So, very good. Anything else? Okay, you made the motion to okay, make the adjourn. motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Soder? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes, Kathy. President Walsh? Yes. This meeting is adjourned.